and Beal have absolutely optimized everything as far as aerodynamics go. They have absolutely sealed off wheel wells so there's no airflow through the car from the wheels. Uh, they have, uh, um, they have uh, wheel spats that turn with the wheels so that there's no loss in aerodynamic losses as the wheels turn. Uh, Beal will have all of the seams taped so in other words, the only airflow that goes through the car are absolutely controlled entry vents. And then uh, Beal has a Venturi in the rear so that they recover energy as the air goes out of the car. They've, they've really thought of everything. And beautiful, absolutely smooth, polished design, both Honda and Beal. They're, uh, they're going to be very, very fast. I, I expect them to beat, both of them, Honda and Beal, to beat uh, the record for the course by probably 10 to 15 kilometers per hour, I think. Uh, both of them will go faster by that that much than uh, the Sun Racer, General Motors Sun Racer, 1987. Uh, the next uh, last real innovation is Michelin and Bridgestone have formulated special tires, especially for the cars. Uh, Michigan, uh, Beale, that's Michelin, and uh, uh, the Ford car, uh, Aurora, have c tires that are designed specifically for their car, for their service, and they have a much lower rolling resistance than a standard bicycle tire or the other tires the other team members are using. Uh, Honda has uh, tires by Bridgestone and also specially constructed for the car. They're very high pressure. They have, uh, in American terms, 120 to 150 pounds per square inch and uh, very thin, very supple, very resilient. And they'll roll over asphalt, rough asphalt, with about one-third the rolling resistance of an automobile tire. They're very efficient. Chester, have you observed any developments in technology with the battery systems? Uh, the battery systems are not as innovative. Uh, the battery systems are, yes, I'll tell you in a minute, but the battery systems are standard technology, that's commercial technology, nothing special for the cars. The, most, the cleverest system I've seen is Aurora, Australian car. They figure that they can charge in the evening uh, sun and the morning sun, which is allowed by the rules. They figure they can pick up about two kilowatts uh, hours of energy. So what they've done is they have two kilowatt hours of lead acid batteries, and then they have a whole pack about uh, three kilowatt hours of dry lithium batteries. Dry lithium batteries have the highest energy density of any battery in the race. So it's like carrying an extra fuel tank. They have this reserve fuel tank of dry lithium batteries. And then the other ones they'll drain every night and charge every night, hopefully. And it's a very, very logical and clever system. The only people that have uh, kind of a dual battery pack that uh, the rest of the people all use silver zinc, very expensive batteries, thirty to sixty thousand dollars worth of batteries. Uh, I think uh, Aurora probably has an equal capability with about the same weight and much, much less expensive. Now, you've just been the, through the scrutineering process. Yeah. What did they tell you? There are, the, the car now is a little bit too long. Uh, I changed the solar cells and I didn't check how long it is together now. Uh, before it was less than six meters and now it's, it's more. I didn't check it, you know. Have they penalized you? Yes, one hour. One hour uh, penalty, yes. Will that worry your program? No. <laughs> one hour uh, is nothing for me, no. Who is sponsoring you? Uh, my real sponsor is my wife and my daughter. <laughs> you know, if you, they uh, not all the time with me, you know, and, and behind me, then never it will go, you know. So you are here because of your interest in solar power? Yes, yes. Makes what? me crazy, you know. <laughs> Maybe you have to be crazy to drive in a stability test where the solar car is passed by a road train in many cases traveling with a closing speed of over 180 kilometers per hour. One wonders what failure of this test might mean. Toyota 56 passes the braking test. The top speed of a car is measured 
and this determines its grid position. Time for number one, spirit of BUBN, 129.9. as uh, good as we can get it, but uh, the thing that you think about just before the race is that uh, you know, there's large amounts of good and bad luck in this race, and uh, so you're going to be sure how things are going to turn out once the flag drops. <laughs> We're all set for the race, the batteries are in, ready to go. Great. What sort of tactics are you planning? Um, to take it slow through the corner. So it'll be fairly congested through there and then just take a steady pace, we'll see how the cloud is and the sun and other than that, Mark will tell me on the radio. <laughs> Oh, it looks tremendous for a good start, but this year, more than before, we've had so many batteries uh, wanting to be changed, so many seals breaking. Uh, we've had about six or seven vehicles we've got to re-scrutinise re now, which is very, very difficult. I think for the next race, we'll think of a better way of doing it. We've never had this before. It's most unusual. I don't know whether the competitiveness of this race and seals breaking are related or not. are better this year, ready for a good start. Well, it's not raining, so it must be better. <laughs> The cars head out on their 3,000 kilometer race. Many millions of dollars have been spent on some of these cars, but in five days' time, they will all be out of date. The technology used in this race is developing very quickly. Leading the way is Beale and Honda, followed by Toyota and Kyocera. Then comes Michigan and Solar Eagle, Nissan and Sofix, Ashaya and Aurora, Zero to Darwin, Waseda, George Washington, 